I'm Tambi Saffron from Focus Magazine, and I am at the hot spot, Catch Los Angeles in West Hollywood. And I'm talking to one of the owners, Mark Birnbaum. Hello. Nice to see you, Mark. Nice to see you. Mark has open catch after successful run in New York, and he's also been dubbed by Ford Magazine as the king of New York hospitality. Tell us a little bit about how you got started, how catch came to be, and how'd you get that title? Well, it wasn't just me. It was our company, M Group. But um, we started in New York City, Eugene and I. Uh, we were two young kids that were looking to do a nightclub together. And uh, we found a space in the meatpacking district, which wasn't nearly as popular as it is today, um, in 2006 or so. And we opened our first nightclub called Ten June, which was um, named that because I'm born on June 10th and Eugene is born on June 10th. So we called it Ten June, which... Not everybody knows still to this day, 10 years later. But um, above it was a restaurant, and we really liked the concept of the one-stop shop. So moving people from a restaurant that's actually a restaurant, then down into the basement where it's a separate entrance, separate name, nightclub, seemed to be a great you know, way to take customers, handhold basically your customers from one experience to the next seamlessly. So that's sort of where we started. And as we grew older and as we... Um, wanted to kind of expand our horizons. We opened our own restaurant called Abe and Arthur's on 14th Street in New York City, just two blocks away from the original uh, concept of 10 June. And we put a new nightclub underneath that called SL. Abe and Arthur's is our grandfather's, so that also, again, paid homage to ourselves. Very cute. Without, I love that. You know, yeah. So we wanted to keep it personal. So 10 June was the birthday. Abe and Arthur's was grandfather's. SL was actually Eugene's, which was Simeon Lounge, but no one could say Simeon, so SL it was. And that went for a number of years. And then finally, on 13th Street, a space came available, and we turned that into the original Catch, which is now in its fifth year. And now there are four Catch restaurants. There LA's are. LA's the fourth one. That's correct. Where, where are the others? So the first one, as mentioned, is on the second, third, and fourth floor uh, in New York City in Meatpacking District. The second one is in Dubai uh, in the Fairmont Hotel. And also the third is in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, where I just came back, hence my amazing tan. <laughs> um, <laughs> And that is also on a rooftop. Uh, each location actually has a rooftop except for Dubai. So in New York City, we have a rooftop. Mm -hmm. Plato Carmen is a complete rooftop. And here in LA is a complete rooftop as well with a retractable roof. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Why did you pick LA for the fourth location? You know, I think LA sort of uh, chose us in a way because it's far. Um, and unless the location was perfect, we really had no intention of necessarily coming this far away. Um, but we did believe in, in Los Angeles as, a, as another major city. Our clientele, certainly New York uh, uh, to L.A. Is a, is a normal sort of travel, right? So we take care of a lot of people from California in New York City already. So we were open to the idea, but the space was 100% why we're here. We were looking for a rooftop and only a rooftop. There aren't a lot in, in, in West Hollywood specifically or even in, in Los Angeles. A lot of that is because of just commercial on top of residential. It's difficult to have a, a large rooftop open until 2 o'clock in the morning in this area. Mm -hmm. We saw this four and a half years ago. Fell in love with the location, Main on Main as we call it, on the corner of Melrose and San Vicente, which is a big artery for the area. And it's 10,000 square feet. And if we could accomplish what we wanted to accomplish, this was where we wanted to be and we could. And how long did it take to actually transform the space? And did you work with a designer? Because it's absolutely beautiful. We actually, I want to say four and a half years ago, we signed this lease. Mm -hmm. It was still a shell of a building with almost like a shroud outside. You couldn't even see it. Um, it took another two years for them to even really finish the building for us to go in front of the uh, community board of, of West Hollywood to ask for our licenses and get our CUP, it's called. And then another year went by of building it. <clears throat> meaning the ground floor, the, the base building itself. And then we came in nine months ago, really, and, and just built out the entire rooftop space with a designer, uh, New World Design from New York. Mm -hmm. We brought out here, uh, it's their first project uh, with us, and we're extremely hands-on. So that was a great firm to work with that could kind of deliver our dream. So you were involved with the design <clears throat> process from beginning to end? I think being involved is an understatement. I think mm -hmm. any any good operator or any any uh, person that's really into hospitality, whether it's you know hotels, restaurants, nightclubs, whatever, 
if the operator themselves isn't intimately involved, mm -hmm. I don't think it has soul. I don't, I don't, I don't think that it's a flaw in a designer. I think designers have great ideas, but you know, individuals have dreams and visions right. and like it's imagine. I mean, I was imagining this thing four years ago. This now it wasn't exactly this, but every inch of this space, from the light shining on this plant to this logo with succulents inside, to why this brick has paint or doesn't have paint, to why there's a running water fountain when you walk in, every single part of it is discussed and thought about by myself and Eugene, and then executed by our, our designer. What's the key to running a successful restaurant? If there was one thing, it would be a very easy business. There's a tremendous amount of things that go into it. Some of them are teachable, some of them are learnable, if that's a word, over time of basically trial and error. Right. And uh, some of it is luck, and I think, again, like. They say it's the hardest industry in the world. Nine out of 10 restaurants fail. New York City specifically is an incredibly um, uh, competitive market. There's an amazing restaurant, especially just where I'm sitting on 13th Street and 9th Avenue. If I drew a circle of two blocks in any direction, I could literally name the greatest chefs or operators in the world are on my block, ranging from Morimoto to Jean George to to uh, Steve Hansen to a, to a to uh, Tao Group, to Budokan, I mean, you've got uh, Stephen Starr from Philadelphia, and that's just in one block, and all of them are 200 plus seats, right? So if you don't have your concept perfectly done, and you don't do nine out of 10 things on your business plan, meaning you hit a 90 minimum, you fail, right? So an 80 is basically a failure. So you have to really take seriously location, food quality, and what we, we, what we, and service, of course, what we, our mantra has always been great food, great service, great vibe in that order. Mm -hmm. You lead with your food, you lead with your service, and of course the vibe. So all those three components are our key, mm -hmm. plus design, plus you know, clientele, sure. plus just making people feel welcome all the time. And it starts at the front door and it ends at the front door. So hello, hello, thank you for coming. Goodbye and thank you for you know it's it's, it's 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 all of it. What do you think the biggest challenge is? Well, you know, food is again number one, and that's a challenge because when you're in a four in New York, we're 450 seats. Here, we're almost 400 seats. These are big restaurants going from five o'clock in the afternoon all the way to say midnight serving food, and you've got 700, 800, sometimes a thousand covers a night. And to make sure that the first customer is getting the exact same treatment and consistency of food mm -hmm. when you have an exhausted kitchen or you have a tired, you know, annoyed waiter or bus or whatever it is, hostesses, it's, it's a lot of personal interaction, a lot of aggravation, you know, on our side to like just deal with people. If you tell someone that no, for whatever reason, there is an expectation as a customer that you have to get a yes. So we have to figure out how to make a no seem like a yes or at least feel like a yes and that's off the top of my head some of the million challenges sure. that can go wrong before you even taste food. Can we talk about the food? Let's talk, talk about the food. Talk about Chef Andrew Carroll. How did you meet the chef? So Chef Andrew has been with us since the beginning of Abe and Arthur's even. The first restaurant oh, that wow. we did it was a steakhouse. Um, and he was a terrific chef. He was uh, like a number two or so at Abe and Arthur's. When we opened Catch in New York City, he was right there as well. Um, since then, he has gone to each one of our outpost locations as the opening chef. Uh, so in Playa del Carmen, in Dubai, and now in Catch LA, he's the executive chef. Talking to the executive chef, Andrew Carroll. Nice to see you, Andrew. Hi, very nice to see you. Tell us a little bit about what you're making here tonight. Um, tonight we're doing a special, it's a whole bronzino. Uh, it's about two and a half pounds, and we take the bones out from the top so it, it's opened up, and it has a nice arugula sun choke uh, salad inside with some burst tomatoes. Ooh, sounds so yummy. Delicious. What's your favorite thing on the menu here? Um, my favorite item right now would be the hearts of palm cake. Um, it's the sauce I, I got from when I was living in Mexico, so it's a nice pepian sauce with uh, guajillo and ancho chilies, and it's a vegan gluten-free dish that is very good for LA. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a kind of a fan favorite right now for everybody. What made you decide to become a chef? Um, I became a chef because um, it's. I started working in kitchens when I was 16, and 
I did go to uh, school to for psychology, but next thing I know, my brother called me out. He said, I bought you a one-way ticket. Uh, let's move out west. So I dropped out of school, and uh, next thing I know, it's in San Francisco and culinary school, and kind of never looked back. And if you were stranded on a desert island with just five ingredients, what would they be? Um, I think my five items that I would take would be, uh, let's see, I would bring maybe a nice blue cheese, uh, a nice hard cheese, like an aged Parmesan. Mm -hmm. I would bring a humble fog. I would bring um, a nice baguette. And I would just eat cheese and bread all day. That's cheese all and bread, that's all you would eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. So thank you so much, Mark, for talking to us. This place is, is wonderful. It's beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you so much for having and, uh, us. Yeah, thanks for talking to us today. My pleasure. Anytime. Los Angeles, I've found to be a little bit more local based, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, one industry as opposed to multiple industries. Oh, hey. Hi. <laughs> this is Marlon. Hey, how you doing? Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. How you doing? Oh, Typical LA experience. experience. I you yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. No, no, a little bit of both. Crashing your interview right now. It's all good. Okay. You are. I'm sorry. Marlon's a regular. Food he with eats delicious. a lot. Thank I you so love much. this man, and I love this place, and I love you, because oh. you're talking to me. I love you. <laughs> Hi, Mark. I'll see you in a minute. He's a character. It's great. Best lobster mac on the planet. It's true. <laughs> He's smart and fun. That's great.